Words of Welcome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to virtual worship at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. We are located in Port Angeles, Washington, on the traditional territory of the Klalem people. We are part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We seek to welcome all of you, with no exceptions, to the full life of this community of faith. And it seems that I really need to emphasize that all indeed means all. It means all in the sense of everybody, no matter who you are and where you are in your life. We do not mean all in the sense of all who look like us, think like us, share our theology and live like we think people should live. Every church says all are welcome. But too many of you have experienced that the all in all are welcome is just a phrase that does not include you because you are somehow wrong. Unfortunately, the church is an institution that is not beyond destroying souls and devastating lives. It is tragic that so many Christians focus so much on the perceived flaws of others instead of their own. No wonder that many people run from organized religion as if they were chased by the proverbial devil with his pitchfork. To all who have suffered at the hands of the church, I do apologize. I confess the church's sin of self-righteousness and our attempt to conveniently proclaim a God who looks and feels, loves and hates just like we do. We are committed to do better and to heal the wounds that badly organized religion has caused. God loves you no matter what and we do our best to do likewise. And because we are also flawed and sinful, the love your neighbor as yourself part of our faith remains a work in progress. It is Advent. We wait for the night in which year after year the Christ child is born into the hearts of the human race anew. Christ came to all. Christ dwells in all. Christ heals the world as only Christ can heal it. We hope and pray that this year God's seed of love finds fertile soil in our hearts and that the church acts as an agent of God's grace. Our service will be broadcasted by our local radio station KONP today at 11 a.m. We thank Jonathan and Laurel Frieser for sponsoring the broadcast. If you are listening on the radio and would like to see the service as well, please go to www.gototrinity.org and 2 is a number 2, www.gototrinity.org and follow the link that takes you to this virtual service. And now let us begin. Commemorations. Nicholas, Bishop of Mira, died around 342, commemorated on Sunday, December 6, 2020. Little is known about Nicholas, except that he was a bishop in present-day Turkey. According to legend, he was famous for his habit of secret gift-giving. That gave rise to the traditional model of Santa Claus, Saint Nick. Gathering him, fling wide the door.
Prayer of the Day. Let us pray. Loving Lord, when we have strayed, you have called us to come home to you. With all our hearts, we return to you and gratefully accept your gentle love for the sake of the one whose spirit lives in us, Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. Amen. Passing on the Faith Today I want to tell you what happens when children in Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, Alsace-Lorraine and many other regions in Europe get a boot like this. On the evening of December 5th, the kids put this boot in front of their doors. And in the morning of December 6th, the boot looks like this. It's full of good stuff, chocolate and nuts and little toys. December 6th, uh, which is today, is St. Nicholas Day. It is a feast day of St. Nicholas of Myra, who lived in modern-day Turkey during the Roman Empire from March 15th in 270 to December 6th in 343. There are many legends about these saints who all have to do with generosity and charity. Here's one of them. At the time, no girl could get married without her father providing a dowry. A dowry is a sum of money she brings into her new family. If the father was too poor, the girls couldn't get married. Exactly that happened to three daughters of a poor man who had no money to provide a dowry. And so, when it was dark, Saint Nick grabbed a sack of gold snuck up to the house and threw the sack of gold through the window and ran away. The poor man could marry his first daughter. And Saint Nick did that for all daughters. He waited until it was dark and threw a sack of gold through the window and then took off at warp speed. In the Middle Ages, that legend developed into the tradition that on Saint Nicholas Day, people would put money into the shoes of poor people. And that tradition developed into the boots the children put in front of their doors so that St. Nicholas can fill them with gifts. Of course, during the Reformation, our Martin Luther, the great reformer, couldn't pass up the chance to fiddle with the saint's day and its traditions. He moved the gift-giving part to Christmas, into the night between December 24th and December 25th. And then in the 1920s, a big American soda company from Atlanta came up with the most successful aid campaign of history. They turned St. Nicholas into Santa, relocated him to the North Pole, gave him a flying sled and a couple of reindeers and the task to distribute Christmas presents. And every Christmas night since the Cold War, NORAD, the North American Air Defense Command, tracks Santa's position on their radar screens as he flies through the world in the night before Christmas. I assume they spike their eggnog with something more potent than the black bubble beverage from Atlanta. I like to remember St. Nicholas as a patron saint of, among others, children, prostitutes and repentant thieves. God works through us as God works through St. Nicholas. God's work, our hands. When someone needs help, God sends us to do the helping. Happy St. Nicholas Day. Welcoming new members. Sharon and Rick Ruter moved to Port Angeles in March after Rick retired from work at Boeing. Sharon retired from teaching a few years ago. They previously lived for 30 years in South Seattle. As you may know, Sharon grew up in Port Angeles and attended Holy Trinity. She was confirmed here and was very active in the Luther League. Let us pray. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We give you thanks for our new members, Sharon and Rick whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of the bread and the prayers, and in service to others. 
So, welcome, Sharon and Rick. We are in a virtual service, so please use the chat function on your right side to welcome Sharon and Rick. Lighting the Advent wreath. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your Spirit, that we may be enlightened by your teaching. Fill us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose days draws near. Amen. Reading Joel 2, 12 to 13, 28 to 29. A reading from the book of Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel, Luke 11, 9 to 13. The Gospel according to St. Luke. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Word and Art
sermon. We don't know much about Joel the prophet. We don't know when he lived or where exactly. We cannot be sure what historical situation he prophesied about. We only have the biblical text to guide us. In three short chapters, Joel describes the devastation of his country and how God and humans react to it. Locusts devour the harvest. A powerful nation conquers the land. Other biblical prophets react to catastrophe as well, but Joel stands in contrast to most of them because he does not blame the people in their sinfulness for this hardship. He also doesn't name God as initiator of disaster. Joel knows God to be gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Joel's prophecies do not concern themselves with why catastrophes happen. He tells us what to do about it. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Ask the Lord for help. Joel speaks out of unshakable trust in God. Even if everything seems to point to a different reality, if it looks like God has abandoned you, God is punishing you, God doesn't care about you, Joel knows that this is not the truth. Joel trusts in God completely. And so shall we. Joel asks us, all of us, to turn to God in worship and prayer. Instead of despairing and worrying and blaming and doubting, Joel asks us to turn to God and put all our worries to God, trusting in God's goodness and help, even if we don't know exactly what God's help will look like, and even if God's reaction is different from what we expect. Turn to the Lord. Luke seems to be of a similar mind when he cites Jesus as saying, Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Just before these words, Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer. This passage is part of Jesus' answer to the request, Lord, teach us to pray. Simple, isn't it? Ask, search, knock, and you will find a way. Because God will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him, and with help of the Spirit, you will see the path forward. Again, we can see a parallel here to Joel's ancient text in which God pours out God's Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my Spirit. What a powerful verse. The Holy Spirit is a limitless gift to be shared by all, young and old, male and female, free and enslaved. And what an amazing vision to see the diverse group turning to the Lord in prayer, worshiping the Lord with trust and with a deep knowledge that God is good. Prayer is always available to you. Whenever you make the sign of the cross, you make visible Jesus' presence in your life. Every, come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed, amen, is an invitation to Jesus to be with you. Every tearful lament you send up to God, every hopeful wish, every well-known hymn you sing in the shower or the car, is a prayer which connects you with your Creator and with your fellow believer. When we pray the Lord's Prayer here in the virtual space of Holy Trinity some minutes from now, we do not only connect with our fellow church members from this church, no, we connect with so many other believers all over the world, many of them sitting in front of their screens just as you and me on this Sunday morning. 
And believe me, just by doing this, by turning to the Lord, by coming to church faithfully, even in this different way during the pandemic, by keeping our neighbors safe through our precautions, we are making this world a better place. Prayer is a powerful force for the good. There are a variety of ancient versions of the Lord's Prayer. The Gospel of Luke came to us in different manuscripts and scrawls, and not all of them had the exactly same content. I will give you now one of the very short versions in the New International Translation. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Amen. The prayer starts with praising God. Hallowed, greatly revered and honored be your name, we say. Then we proclaim the core of Jesus' mission here on earth, to bring the kingdom of God, a kingdom of justice and peace, a kingdom of love and grace. Then we ask God for four things, for daily bread for all of us, for forgiveness and the ability to forgive, and for not being tempted to stray from our quest for the kingdom. Such a simple prayer and still it contains so much comfort and guidance. Martin Luther, the founder of our denomination, recommended to pray the Lord's Prayer every morning and every night. Personally, he combined a personal prayer with the Lord's Prayer and the Creed every morning and every evening. We have three traditional creeds in the Church, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Asianesian Creed. Sometimes, we recite other creedal expressions during our services, the, the Native American Creed or the Creed from New Zealand, for example. The passage I cited earlier from the prophet Joel is a creedal text. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. We can find this creedal statement not only in the book of Joel, but also in the books of Exodus, Numbers, Psalms, and Nehemiah. And then, of course, there's the shortest creed in the New Testament from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Jesus is Lord. So, should Martin Luther's daily practice inspire you? You have options. There is a lot to be said for the practice of daily devotions, Bible readings, prayers, hymns, meditations. Joel's call to us to turn to the Lord is so much easier if we do it regularly, every day, every week. Then our connection to God and the cloud of saints just becomes part of our daily life. Did you know that a daily lectionary is printed in our hymn book? starting on page 1,121. And the ELCA provides little booklets with daily devotions, which are available at our church. Now in the Advent season, we have added Advent devotions to the mix. Personally, I just love to light candles on the Advent wreath, one candle more every week, and to just watch the flame for a while. There are many ways to feel close to God and to let the Holy Spirit guide you. If daily God time is not part of your life yet, I invite you to make it so. You might need a couple of tries until it really sticks, but eventually you will get there. And if you do have regular devotions as part of your life, I invite you to deepen them or broaden them, whatever feels right. Prayer is a powerful force for the good and a comforting help in difficult times. So, in closing, I invite you to pray with me the words of the fourth verse of our opening hymn today, Fling Wide the Door. Let us pray. Come, Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
our hearts are open wide in trust. Oh, show us now your lovely grace. Upon our sorrows shine your face, and let your Holy Spirit guide our journey in your grace so wide. We praise your holy name from age to age the same. Amen. Hymn of the Day, Joy to the World. Prayers of the people. We offer our prayers again, Lord, for all the things that matter most to us. And we're glad that you are nearer than our next breath and never turn a deaf ear to our concerns and needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many of us are lighting candles at home on Advent wreaths over these weeks. We maybe made a new one for the season or got the old one down off the shelf next to the Christmas decorations. Fresh or dusty, each week's candle traditionally sheds light on a different theme, and this week's theme has two parts, peace and also the foretelling messages of the Old Testament prophets. Father God, we pray today for motivation to freshen up our faith along with the Advent wreath. We ask for new candles in our lives to light the way to Bethlehem. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If we could sing the whole in Vespers like we have done during Advent Pass, we would prayerfully sing for peace between nations and peace between peoples. War drums still beat around the world and the little drummer boy is the one keeping time. Whether in the Middle East, Central Asia, Ethiopia, Brazil, or the middle of our own nation cities, gunfire, flashbang grenades, and clicking nightsticks make up the world's percussion section. Tomorrow is December 7th, a day that still lives in infamy for lives lost at Pearl Harbor and the initiation of the war in the Pacific. Tragically, wars start in the most surprising ways in the most out-of-the-way places. We pray again for peacemakers everywhere and welcome the Prince of Peace to come again and show us the way to Bethlehem's silent night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Isaiah's world was one of great uncertainty and his flock had strayed. His message of a saving Messiah was met with deaf ears, dissension, and disbelief. We confess that we are like Isaiah's flock and a simmering stormy anxiety has been building in us over these months, sometimes into hard to control thunderheads. Dear Lord, we pray to be careful that our personal storms 
don't flash to innocent lightning rod victims who might be as close as our living rooms or one button away social media posts. Help us be agents of peace in all aspects of our lives and that we shine a peaceful light in what we do and whomever we are with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With big, deep, hopeful breaths, we pray that our world's leaders will see the value of international cooperation to develop pandemic vaccines at record speed as a reminder of what can be done quickly for common cause. Fresh water, enough food, clean air and health are part of your vision of peace for us, and we pray to be your hands in bringing that dream to life in our world and community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Used or lost, mostly blue face masks are blowing in the wind and getting stuck in bushes. And caprice of the wind that we can't control is maybe metaphor for what we can control and what we can't in this new normal. Our attempts to be personally safe and protective of others is tempered with the increasing reality that all we know and take for granted is vulnerable and impermanent. We pray to use the coming weeks of Advent to face reality, but also re realize it is your reality and that you, O oh God, are our certainty, have never abandoned us, and sent us your Messiah's confirmation. Our Lord Jesus Christ calmed the winds of the Galilean Sea long ago, and we can expect him to do the same in our life's most dire straits. All of these things we pray for in this Advent time in your precious Son's name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Call to mission. Called by God's grace to share the good news, we are the hands of Christ. Opened by love, joined in worship, extended in welcome, offered in service, reaching for justice. Advent Kyrie.
the peace. In God, the universe is connected to all its component parts. Hate, greed, violence, lies and many manifestations of the dark sides of our characters separate humanity from their creator. They replace God with an idol of their own making. Inner and outer peace is a way back to unity with God in Christ. We follow Jesus as Christ shows us the way back into union with God. And so, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Offering Announcement COVID times are difficult and often lonely. We sit at home, we wear masks when we go out, and I wonder if I would recognize our new church administrator, Kelly Truster, if I saw him on the street without a mask. Yes, we have a new administrator. You can say hi in the chat because he's with us right now. We can't see him, but he is there. Reminds me of someone else we can't see, but who is there? Um, um, what's his name? Uh, never mind. Will come to me sooner or later. Next week, we will have a short video in which he will introduce himself. One of the peculiar things about people who work in church is that they expect to get paid. Go figure. For that, we need funds. And that is where you come in. We hope you will provide these funds. So please open another window in your browser and navigate to www.gototrinity.org and 2 is a number 2, www.gototrinity.org and give through our secure online giving platform. Your gifts keep this church going. And despite all the jokes about money from all of us, thank you for your incredible generosity. Offering prayer. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Communion Announcement 
This is a point in the service where we would celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. It is central to our faith because we actually get to encounter Christ with, in and under the bread and wine. But this virtual service is not the right framework to celebrate communion. And so we meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom as long as this pandemic lasts to celebrate communion with each other. We invite all to join us. Please check our website for details. The Lord's Prayer And now let us all pray together with the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Blessing and now receive into your hearts and into your lives the blessings of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Sending him, prepare the royal highway. Dismissal. I hope to see you in five minutes in our virtual coffee hour on Zoom. I know Zoom meetings are exhausting and cost a lot of energy, but they are also a lot of fun. So I invite you all to come, especially those who have never been to one of these meetings. Give it a try. And until then, go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.